Hey, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and an energy worker and also a channel. Uh, do what I can to bring through some higher level perspectives from uh, some helpful uh, disembodied beings as well as tying that in with soul-based evolutionary astrology. This is the eighth video in a series of the true black moon or oscillating apogee, Lilith, uh, in the natal houses. This is, of course, on the eighth house. And... Um, the eighth house is um, an interesting place. It's a place that a lot of people fear having to live in. But then if you're actually living in it, you learn certain things about it, which I'm gonna to try to explain to you in these 10 or so minutes. Uh, the eighth house is the house of intimacy. It's a house where we explore vulnerability. And it is the house, it's a house of, of intimacy and connectedness. Now, uh, the seventh house, one before it, is the relationship-oriented house where we're getting to know each other. What do you like to do? Oh, where did you grow up? What kind of music do you like? This get to know you bridge building. What common ground might we find we have or might we create? And there's a very conversational, you know, meeting each other vibe in the seventh house. The eighth house, which is associated, that's associated with Libra and Venus, right? The seventh. The eighth house is associated with Scorpio and Pluto. And so you have this depth and the deep psychology that drives people. And you go from, what kind of music do you like, into um, <laughs> do, you know, this triggering effect. We trigger each other when we get into intimacy. Now intimacy can be sexual. It can also be, I trust you, I'm telling you a secret. I'm making myself vulnerable. I'm showing you a part of myself I don't often show people. Now the, so the eighth house is a place where we don't often see a person's uh, business. Now, if you run into me, you'll see my sun. You might see my rising and you talk to me, you see my sun. If I trust you, I'll tell you my moon. The eighth house is like 10 steps beyond that. The eighth house, whatever is in there in the natal chart is you, the chart holder must trust and be willing to become vulnerable in order to get down in there. It's a sacred space. So it's also the house where we experience power over power under dynamics the most loudly and the most intensely. When I become vulnerable, I may feel like my soft belly is exposed. You, you realize, you know, when you meet a dog and the dog's like, hey, you're cool. But then after a couple times, the dog might roll over and expose her belly. And there's a vulnerability in that. So you could harm her. She's vulnerable. Same thing in the eighth house. When you reveal who you are and you tell a secret or you reveal a deep part of yourself and you trust, the capacity to be hurt is deepened. So it's about power over power under dynamics because when we feel threatened or hurt, we might try to overpower others to try to protect ourselves or hurt them because they hurt us. That's why it's about the, how, the, the, the power over power under stuff. If you can make peace, just in general about the eighth house, if you can make peace with the fact that in order to feel complete as a human, you must open up. But when you open up, you will become vulnerable and whatever might be hurtful will hurt even more than other things. When you can accept that truth, then you can also accept that the nature of the eighth house is in regeneration, the phoenix rising from the ashes. I've, I've said lately to somebody, I think in a class or in a, in a reading, um, oh, focus on the image of the phoenix rising from the ashes. Isn't that great? And then they said, the fire sucks. The fire <laughs> hurts like hell. But anyway, you get, to, you get to regenerate later. So in the eighth house, we also go through really deep and intense things together. And we are triggered. Our deep emotional stuff is triggered by each other. We have to learn how to heal that. Now, Lilith, the true black moon Lilith, um, I do not use the mean position. I only use the true black moon or oscillating apogee. Um, I find that asking or using the mean position, which is the averaged out motion of the true black moon that goes like this day to day, um, or it might go like five days direct, four days, you know, seven days retro, 10 days direct. It might, it goes like that. It passes through. I didn't mean to be like, it's like a strobe light effect or some kind of something crazy and, uh, and, uh, not so, but, um, uh, the smoothing it over is so your mind can control it as if it's a planet but it's not a planet. It's a point that is a, a calculated function of the earth, the moon's orbit around the earth. So um, 
asking the mean position, using the mean position is like asking a blow up doll what a woman is like. If you watch this series of videos, you're going to hear me say that over and over again and asking a Barbie doll what a woman is like. Um, so you, I use the true black moon. Um, and it hints at the raw, visceral, primal emotions and responses that we have to things. Intense attractions, intense repulsions, especially in the eighth house. So um, true black moon Lilith in the eighth house is within intimacy. Lilith is there for you if you have this in your chart. So the right people to trust are Lilith people, but Lilith is inherently triggerable. In intense, visceral, emotional, energetic responses, even anger, like severe desire or severe repulsion, severe anger. Something about emotions coming up, right? So in the eighth house, the true black moon Lilith, you need to trust people in order to access this part of you. But you might also have a hair trigger, anger response, defensive response, because people have mistreated you in the past. This idea about power over power under, this idea about the eighth house is where we experience deep bonded intimacy, where we have to strip away layers of ourselves and reveal our gooey centers. Um, with True Black Moon Lilith there, you might have attracted power under, power over, or abusive scenarios of some kind, or somebody um, making you wrong for what you need or what you feel emotionally, or how you need to process something with another person. So remember, the seventh house is this bridge building, get to know you. Do you like ABBA? No, I like John Mellencamp. I don't know. Uh, but the eighth house is that place where I open up and you, your deepest stuff is triggered. And then you, you being triggered triggers my deepest stuff. So with Lilith involved here, uh, some people might be very, very defensive and closed down because they felt they've been burned terribly, uh, betrayed, lied to, manipulated, used, even sexually, uh, abused, that kind of thing can be part of this uh, story as you learn about uh, this deep part of who you are. Now, as Lilith's, um, the need in any of us is to develop autonomy and also this listening to our deep, uh, instinctive, visceral responses, it's very important that you open to people when your body says yes. When your body, emotions, your energy field, they're all aligned together and they say yes. And when they say no, that you trust that. Even if someone's kind to you, that person's chemistry might not work for you. Even if somebody's doing something for you, doesn't mean you need to open up and, and you know, give of yourself in that way. So True Black Moon Lilith in the eighth house a lot of people are going to have the defensive things going on and the walls put up because of past experience. And now, again, I talked about for a moment the idea of the phoenix rising from the ashes. Isn't that a great idea? But yeah, you had to go through fire first. Um, recognize if you have True Black Moon Lilith, the oscillating apogee in the eighth house, everything can be healed. But you have to be willing to feel and own what you're, what you're carrying in order to move uh, through them and beyond them. In the, in the, the Lilith book, uh, Healing the Wild, I do outline nine stages of the archetypal process and how to move through them and how to heal them. With eighth house planets and points, we can find ourselves so hurt that we shut down and freeze in one of these phases, um, but it's especially with Lilith here. So it's very important to be able to be willing to move through things and heal things, and I outline uh, ways to do that in the Lilith book. Um, Lilith in the eighth house is also, so this whole, I've been kind of focusing on um, intimacy, right? And sexuality in a certain way. Uh, it's also going to apply to the other things about uh, eighth house living, which include sharing resources and sharing money. Uh, you're going to find that if you have this placement, that certain decisions within partnership, shared resources goes beyond money. It's also time and attention, right? and of how you use space in your shared environment. Uh, that's a resource. And so you might find that uh, everybody else or this uh, a trusted partner or a spouse has like a clear idea and it just doesn't work for you. You have to say no. And that is Lilith asserting that something just simply doesn't work for you. How you use shared money or how somebody else might expect you to use money, that can come up a little bit with Lilith in the eighth house too. Um, yeah, power over, power under regarding money. 
uh, the Lilith uh, imperative for all of us is to choose to be autonomous, even if that's being willing to go it alone, to trust ourselves, to really know what we feel, know what we need, and, uh, and go with that. And so within this house of deep partnership, there's some negotiation and compromise that's needed. Uh, but the most important thing is for the person with Lilith uh, in the eighth house to trust uh, the body, the heart, the emotions all wrapped up together, these signals in the body that say, yes, please, and no, thank you. So in the description below, I'm going to list all those resources uh, on Lilith that I've spent the years developing. Uh, thanks for your time and energy, and uh, take care of yourself.